Okay, hello everyone. Right, so welcome to my virtual reality fly. Now, remember, uh, examiners will change the routes periodically. They've under no obligation to go on the same route. They are allowed to vary it, but this gives you a rough guide of what's going on. Just done a little video about the car park, so I, without any further delay, let's get on with it. So you come out of the car park, round here to the end of the road, and then off you go. And so as you're coming up to this bit here, up there, you come up to here, and I want you to be checking left and right, making sure it's all safe, no one's crossing the road, and then out you go. All right, so simple, out into the road, checking it's safe, and off we go. Right, so I am completely lost. Where's what's going on with this? Right there. Right. There we go. So you just drive along this road. Then you've got this roundabout. As you can see, it's two lanes. Make sure you are in the left hand lane as you go through. Because there are two lanes, you have to make sure you maintain two lanes on the roundabout. OK, I do not want to see you cut across. So when you come across this thing, you want to be doing that. All right, just like if you're in this lane, you would do that. Do not cut. Stay on the outside. OK, uh, out of interest, these raised curbs here, uh, these are where pedestrians cross. Uh, it's not a pedestrian crossing, so you don't have to give way to them. But of course, if it looks like someone's going to walk into the road, then I would um, not run them over. OK, so we come up to here. There you go. People waiting to cross. Um, you can give way or not. It doesn't really matter. OK, so as you come up to here, it's just an all roundabout. Check it safe when it is out you go. So we're going to go ahead to staying on the outside and going up that lane there. Don't forget, this whole section is a 20 zone. So we're just driving along up here, just following the road. Now. They often park you on this hill here. There you go. Somebody park there. So somewhere along here, they normally say park before that sign there. There's a blue sign. There it is. So they normally say just stop roughly where that white car is. Now, they get a hill start out of you to start with. OK, and then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, don't forget when they say, please drive on. Cater for things like this. So this bloke's coming up behind you. He's going for an overtake. Now, logically, he's only going to go into this lane to go back to the left. If you then populate that bit, he's going to be stuck out here on the right and you'll get marked down for that. So whenever you go to pull away, make sure that person isn't blocked and has the ability to come back in. All right. You will get away with it. It's a minor on the driving test or driver fault. If you pull away with a car in this lane. But if it was a normal road, I mean, this is obviously a two lane road but if it was a one lane two way road so you've got oncoming traffic and you moved off while someone's overtaking you you will fail your driving test all right so as a general guide just wait all right so when they're ready drive it on all right then test route number 10 everyone's favorite so we're going to go ahead here and then we're going to go left first exit heading towards farnborough at queen's roundabout so use your stuff, come up to here. We're going to be going left, so I want you to go straight across through the hatched area. There's a lane there for turning left. We go through the hatched area because it's got a broken white line around it. Don't go here and then there, just go through there. You're allowed there. You're only not allowed in there if it's got a solid white line, but it's got a broken white line around the outside of it. OK, so just go straight into there. And then when safe, we're going to go left around here so we've got traffic lights around here checking for pedestrians as you go around here two lanes into one so check on your right make sure nobody's trying to overtake you and into here notice very wide apart you have a change in speed limit to 40 miles an hour just there and there and then you just go to farnborough all right so we're just driving along here doing your 40 as we get down here it goes back into a 30 down there, as you come down this hill, you've got 230 signs, so make sure you're not faster than 30 by there. I actually recommend that you'd be doing 30 around this area. OK, so come down, make sure you've got it all under control and then enter doing 30. We drive along here. They finally repainted this area. 
So just here, this was quite tricky originally, but they've now put paint in. So as you come along here, you want to be moving into the left hand lane by default. Don't drive down the middle and then come over. Just get in your lane. In these pictures, there's no markings on the floor, but I was through it today and they have repainted. So it's very easy to just pick your lane now. There, so this is all fresh paint now. So it's very easy. So just come down here into there and follow the road ahead. So we should be in the left hand lane. Don't know why Google van is in the right hand lane. That's just bizarre. Uh, if you're just driving in the right hand lane, the examiner will fail you. So you want to demonstrate that you do normal driving behavior, which is drive on the left, unless you know otherwise. That is for turning left to head towards BMW, of course. So when safe, we go along through here, making sure you stay in your lane. Don't fall. Right. So what the BMW is doing is what I was just going to tell you not to do. He's fallen into that lane. You want to be out here. So stay in this bit, not this bit. Down here, following the road ahead. <coughs> right. So we go down here. Now start looking. There's a car coming around the roundabout there. And we're going to go ahead, second exit at the roundabout. It's marked towards car parks. So we come in here. That's a left turn only lane. So this goes ahead and so does this one. So we'll take the left of the two. There you go. You see, look, car park, second exit. So I want you looking now. There's a white car coming around. You should be varying your speed on the approach so that when you get to that bit of road there, there is a hole to put your car into. There's a bit of a hole there. So you could just drive out behind the white car. Yes, especially as no one else is coming. So you just follow it out and follow the Fiesta. Now as we go around here, we're going second exit. So count your exits off. That's number one. And we come around here. Start checking left. Make sure these guys are stopped to make sure there's no bus coming through here. And then you move over. Be proactive. I want you coming through here and then populating this lane. So just like Google Van has, he's come around and he's immediately got into this lane. Perfect. You don't want to go there and then back there. You watch the next picture. You'll be in the middle. Yeah, knew it, knew it, knew it. But he should be coming down here. So then we follow this road round. Now, as you come around here, look on your route. There's a zebra crossing down there. So is there anybody walking through the car park? As we come down here, this confuses people quite a lot. There's a bus lane in the middle of the road. Notice it says bus lane and that's upside down. So that's for actually for people coming this way. So just drive along here, staying in your lane. You've got a road sign there that warns you of pedestrians and a sandy coloured road surface. Now that is a high grip road surface so you can stop quicker. But what happens is people tend to see, they come down here, they see the words bus lane in the middle of the road, see that, think that's the bus lane, panic and jump into that bit and now they've just crossed a solid white line going into the wrong oncoming traffic. So it is just a high grip road surface, don't panic. Then you go around here. Now you've got a pedestrian crossing, remember don't go onto a crossing uh, if there's a pedestrian who looks like they're just about to or there is somebody already on it. Now, if there is a car sat there, don't block this. When there's room, then you can move up to there. So we're here. All right. Now, it's very common for a bus to stop there and pedestrians to come along here and then cross the road or like he's approaching. So if you think that there's somebody who might step out onto this, then don't go. The way I think about these sort of things is a bit like an inflatable path. So if there's a foot on it, the whole thing inflates and becomes a pavement. Now, we're not allowed to drive on pavements. So therefore, if it's a pavement, you don't drive on it. As soon as their foot is off, it deflates and becomes a road. So it just inflates, and deflates and you go on it when it's deflated. All right. Uh, when you think you can safely do it, go across. But if it looks like somebody's crossing, and then another one's just about to step on. You've missed your opportunity, right? For God's sake, a good way to fail your driving test. Don't do this, all right? It's very common. A pedestrian starts to cross the road like this. When they get to this section, a car here then goes across. That's very illegal. Don't do it. You will fail your driving test immediately. The, ex the pedestrian must be fully off. So now we just follow this round, going where the taxi is. Think about the buses that were parked because there's all bus stations there. Don't forget, people might walk around in front of a parked bus. So just be careful of that. Let me come around here. <clears throat> More high grip road surface. Van in our way. Come to here. And again, you've got pedestrian crossings. Now, it's quite common. We can go and read my document about how to read traffic. And you've got um, trailer hitting mentioned in there. It's quite common that as we go across, 
this person might then step out to do a trailer hit on us. Now, if we are going across and he steps out, technically we're supposed to stop if we can, because he's now standing on a pedestrian crossing. But don't panic. If he just looks like he's stepping out to walk behind us, it's fine. But if we came around this corner and found him already on it, then you have to stop, even if the traffic lights are green, because there is somebody on a crossing. When safe, you go across. Now you've got more pedestrian crossings. So these could change. The lights could change and traffic could be backing up again. Do not block this. So you would actually wait there-ish if there are cars there. Alternatively, you can go up to that bit. You've got more traffic lights at the end. So the traffic can back up again. Do not block these roads. You could stop there so somebody could get in front of you or get behind you and come out. But do not do that and never stop on a pedestrian crossing following this road ahead we're going to be turning left now just cover yourself so as we go around this corner as we head off down there i want you checking left and right as you come through so we come up through there and we turn left heading down there towards farnborough now the reason i'm saying careful is because of that traffic light there oh hello we're in a shop how did that happen right <laughs> Google van crashed into a shop. Right. So we go into here. Thank you. Right. Now, it's just this bit here. They've got two lanes here. So we will be coming out there and turning left. But what happens is that gets a green traffic light for turning left when we are told that we can go. Right. But sometimes people in this lane see their traffic light and think they've been given a green light and they drive at you. So just be careful as you come out that you check right to make sure you haven't got somebody who's made an error and who's trying to kid you. So we come around here and we follow the road ahead. So now we're just going along here. Now, the examiner will say to you, turn right at the roundabout. What you've got to do is look along here. You've got pedestrian crossing. There's the roundabout, but you've got to read your road signs. So as I'm here, I'm looking up there. So I've got a yellow bollard. Yellow bollards are normally on the approach to roundabouts. And then you've got giveaway signs as well and a roundabout sign. So as we're coming down here, just like this, uh, that's there. You can see the blue sign and the no left turn and the roundabout sign. So keep your eyes peeled. Look for these things. And we come up to this roundabout, giving way to the right. Of course, these guys might shield you so you can go out and go around the roundabout. Don't go over it. Go around it. And when safe, we go out around this into here. Now, as we go up this road, sometimes they'll park you there if there's no car there just to get you to rejoin traffic. So this little bit here can confuse people. If you notice, it is wide enough for two cars going past parked cars. So if you come out early, you can get down there, even if there's a bus coming at you. And it is a bus route, so you might well do. But what you want to do if you've got oncoming traffic is look at the wheels of the oncoming vehicle. As we go down here, uh, you just look at oncoming vehicles and you see where their tyres are relative to the white line. And if their wheels are this side of the white line, they're not even in your lane, then you don't need to worry, do you? So we just go down here and at the end of the road, we're turning left. So I want you to aim short into first gear about there-ish and then start following the corner around, checking left and right as you come up to it. Just covering yourself, just checking, make sure it's all good. Now, sometimes you get cars parked here. So as we go out, you might find your nose tempted to go over that white line. Just be careful. You might want to go out a little bit wider and then turn early uh, because this is actually deceptively narrow, this road. So we're now going to go down here. Like this. So this is quite uh, tight. So what I would do is I'd be positioned even on the white line so that if a door opens, I'm not going to hit anybody. Uh, and you can do that providing there is no oncoming traffic at you. If there was oncoming traffic coming at you, then you move nearer the parked cars on the left to allow the oncoming car to get through, but you reduce your speed just in case. And then when that car's gone, you can move to the right a bit, build your speed up and you go wide. Notice down here, this car has got his wheels out into our lane, so we'd have to go a little bit wide. But as you can see, it's not very wide here. Not an awful lot of room. So now we just follow this all the way to the end. Now, let me just zoom out a little bit. This little junction, you've got traffic light there, one there, and there's one there. In fact, there's one there as well. But 
there's a r road that goes underneath this railway bridge and it's only wide enough for one vehicle at a time. Therefore, everybody gets their own go. So as we go out, you can just turn. You don't need to maintain lanes or anything because there won't be anything coming at you because they'll have been told to stop before you're released at this junction, you see. So to go under that bridge, it's only wide enough for one car. And do bear in mind, this is a bus route. So if they can get a bus through there, you can fit through there. So you go up to here. They should be stopped and you go out. So basically just take that shortest route into the tunnel, drive through the middle. See, look, only wide enough for one car. And you go through and then you follow it round to the right, following that red car. So now we just drive along. Now this roundabout is deceptive. It's only a mini roundabout, but you come up here. This bollard could block your view, but you've got cars. And it's just to do with the angle. So if you're in this lane here, as you look across, you can see that car. But any car following them is fully obscured by that car. So whilst that car might not be indicating, implying that he's coming here, all other cars behind could be indicating right to go up there. And because you can't see, you don't assume that it's safe. You So you come up to here, make sure. When there's no one potentially going to turn, then you go across again and up there, right? But just be mindful of that. It can be very dangerous. Now, they might get you to park up on the right along this road. It'd have to be very quiet for them to do that, but they might park you on the left and so on. And this is very common that they will do a car park practice. So they come along here and they turn left, often not exclusively, but, and they go down here and into this car park here, where they will do a forward bay park. All right. Now, as you come down here, let me just zip it along. That like, oh, I didn't do it. Right, so you come up here. <laughs> Blooming Google. So we're turning left. What's that? St. Bernadette's, is it? Okay, so St. Bernadette's. And we come round here. I always wondered what it was called. It's me age, you know, forgetful. So I just come round here. Now, it's fairly narrow. Make sure if anyone's coming out, you give them room. So I would actually go a little bit wide, turn, and then go in on the correct side of the road, and then turn left down there. And what happens is the examiner will get you, so down there, stay on your side of the road. Turn into here. Now, the examiner will get you to go slow, and then they'll say to you, drive forward into a space of your choice on the left or the right. If you're going on the right, please do not go through to that row of cars. You're not allowed through there. And then you do your forward bay park as per our practicing and then they'll say thank you very much reverse out and then drive on again so you come back down here they might get you to go around the car park and in here or you could come up here it's a two-way round uh, car park coming out of here this is deceptively tight everybody goes there and drops off that curb with their rear wheel so don't worry about it it's absolutely fine see what i mean it's just that curb's just a bit, i mean the road's there but people come down here so it it makes you drop off the curb. It's a bit of a bad design, frankly. Uh, but you just come around here and then follow the road. So now we're coming down here all the way to the end and we're turning left. So as we come up to here, I want you to mirrors and signals, checking left and right as you come up to the junction. And when it's all nice and safe, away you go. So now we're just following this road. You've got this roundabout again. This is all to do with bad view. So we've got your roundabout. Now, as you can see, we've got this brick wall. Can't see anything. And if there's nothing blocking your view, there's nothing to stop a car from there or a bicycle or anything from zipping out. Therefore, I want you coming into this slow, checking it's nice and safe. When you're happy, then go across. All right. Better safe than sorry. And we go through here past the BP petrol station, which we obviously <laughs> suddenly decided we needed. So let's go back out. I'm in a BP petrol station. So we've come through that roundabout down here to that roundabout where we go right three. Oh, I'm still in the BP petrol station. Let me out of the BP station. Thank you. Right. So we've come down here. I'm going to go right third exit around that roundabout. Uh, again, it's just like I said before, keep an eye on these guys. Now, you can tell, by the way, that car's leaning again, how to read traffic. Go and read the document. The car's leaning over and his wheels are pointing here. So even though he's in the middle of the roundabout, I think he's going left. Same with the Porsche. He's indicating left. He's leaning over. It looks like he's coming around. Now, he is indicating Porsche isn't. And he did go left. So you don't actually need to look at indicators to work out where people are going. The fact that he was leaning over 
and his tires were pointing that way, he told me he was going that way. So I go around this roundabout and you go up there. Now we're coming up here. Now this is Farnborough sick form. So we're going to be coming up here and turning left where the red car is. So you get priority over everybody. So you go around the corner, making sure we don't run over that kid. And then we go to here. Now, for all of those people that go to Farmer Sick Form, you lot have all been told that you are not allowed to come out of here. And what is very common is that you guys will come through here at too fast a speed because you realize or think that no one can come out of there. I myself have come through here many times. I've even seen a van come out of there because he got told to go away because he came in the wrong entrance. Uh, I've seen bicycles coming out. I've had all sorts of stuff coming out of here. So I want you coming in slow. I don't care what the college has told you you can or cannot do. There's an exit there. So the examiner is expecting you to come in slow, make sure it's safe and then go across. So we follow this round. Now this bit's entertaining. Now we're going up here. This is up a steep hill. And just at the top up there, I don't know if you can actually see, let's, let's zoom over. We have some white lines in the middle of the road just there. All right. Now, I just want to highlight that to you. Because this is very common error. Coming up here. So this past that's your sick form. We come along here. This is all fine. You can see the join in the middle of the road. It's fine. Nice, big, wide road. However, come to this section. Right. You normally have cars parked here. Look at the join. Now, they've laid this road in two strips. You've got one strip here, and you've got one strip there. So as you come up here and there's no central white line, look at the layout. You've got car parking spaces just there. That is the right-hand side. This is the left-hand side of the road. So actually, the middle of the road is about there. It's to the left of the join. That's the center of the road because that is your working area, not this bit. But what happens is people come up here and they see this white or this join and they just drive here, which is actually in the middle of the road. So just at the top, I just showed you some white lines. So at the top of the road, just up there are where the white lines are. And you can't see it in this picture. But when you're driving a car, you can faintly see the white lines just to the right of that tree. So I want you on the left hand side so that you don't drive with the f right hand side of your car driving directly at the right hand side of his car So get over to the left because this join optically throws a lot of people out. All right. So stay more to the left and go up the hill. And just about there is a drain cover, which is quite vicious. If you do fall into it, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. You haven't hit the curb or anything. It's just a massive hole. So if you can position slightly to the right, I uh, slightly to the right for that, I would appreciate it, but you don't have to. And we go up here. Look, you can start to see the white lines. See how much more to the left you need to be. So that is the middle of the road about here. Not there. All right. But you get lots of people that drive up here. And when the white line starts, they go, oops, and they get back into their lane. Because just where that black car is, there's a turning. So if you approach a road or a corner turning on the wrong side of the road, you can imagine how popular the examiner will be or you would be to the examiner. So we come up here. Now, the sat nav has a hissy fit at this point. It now says to you, because you're probably following sat nav, it will say to you, turn left, turn right, all that sort of stuff. But look, it will come up to here and say, turn left. Let's look at the road. It just goes left, doesn't it? That's not a turn left. That's just following the road. Now, the examiner will tell you that the sat nav is talking rubbish. So don't worry. So you just go around here. And then he says, turn right. Well, that's just where the road goes. So again, there's no indicators required. You just follow the road. And as you come down here, the sat nav tells you to turn left. But okay, surprise, look, it goes left. So no indicators required. Just follow the road. So now we're just going down here. And you can tell that the road goes round to the right. But it is quite difficult to see as you come down here. But you have got a road sign there by the blue car that tells you that the road goes right. So again, no indicator. Sat nav is still banging on about turning right, but it is just a goes right. That's where the road goes. You would actually indicate left if you were going there because that's to the left hand side of the road. So this just follows around. No indicator. Sometimes you get buses coming up here and they might need to swing their nose into this lane. So if the bus doing that, just go slow to let them and then go around the corner. Now the sat nav gets it right and he says turn right. But 
lots of learners misinterpret this and they don't even see this turning. They think it's the end of the road. So open up your eyes and make sure you read the sat nav and make sure you know that it's telling you about this lane. It's counting you down. You're saying 300 yards, turn right and so on. So then make sure it's safe and then go around. Remember, do not cut corners. Make sure it's safe. Go around. Make sure you're not being overtaken. All that sort of stuff then in. Now into this road here, they often get you to do parallel park on the left hand side or park on the right and reverse back. It's great for that. Otherwise, it's just a meeting situation. So we just drive along here, come out early. Well, actually, not too early. I'm taking that back. The reason I don't want you coming out early is because you've got this junction. If you approach a junction on the wrong side of the road, they could well fail you. So you want to stay on the left until you're past the somebody potentially coming at you, then get out. All right. Here you have to be on the wrong side of the road because of that car, which is fine. So stay on the uh, left hand side and then come across. And what you're doing is you're looking up the road and you're looking for places where we could pull over to the left. They could pull over to the right if you had an oncoming car and you basically just go on the road. Checking, looking at reflections in the side of doors because our line of sight will go there, off that and round there. So you'll be able to see around the corner a bit better by using reflections in doors. You then just follow this road round here. They could well get you to park up on the left or the right. And then at the end of the road, we're going left and then right. And that roundabout causes no end of trouble. Right. So here we are coming to the end of the road, turning left. So as you come up to here, just checking left and right. If it's good, just go into creek mode, then round the corner. Uh, you often get vans, buses, all that sort of stuff around here. Now, just there, you've got a keep clear box. And the reason we have a keep clear box is because just down behind that house, you can just vaguely see the building in the end, is a ambulance station so you get a lot of ambulances that come out of here and the reason we've got this hatched area here is so that cars if they're queuing at the roundabout will queue on the left the ambulance can go over the hatched area and you can go left or right or whatever but this is to keep clear now the purpose of a keep clear box if i take it back is to allow cars from the side road out so if you've got cars queuing you should queue there but not there and the reason it's there is so that if there was a queue, cars from here can quite legitimately go out and stop in a keep clear box. So you're allowed to stop in a keep clear box if you're coming from a side road, but not if you're on the main road. Now, this roundabout, hey ha, loads of people fail their driving test here. Right, so where is it? Grange Road. So you come down here, and the problem here is this brick wall. So you can see from where we are, Optically, we can only see across to about there. So there-ish, you can only see to there. You come up to this little bit. It's really difficult because there's not a really good picture for this. So let me just go there. <coughs> Did that come out? Right. Problem is, because the road snakes around like that, if you've got a bicycle or a motorbike coming down, he's probably on the left and inside, and this blocks your view. So even when you're here, you still can't see that bit of road. So I actually want you to get your nose out to about here-ish before you actually commit, because you need to see the entire road, left and right. Do bear in mind that oncoming traffic is going to be travelling there, so they're not going to be here. So don't worry about putting your car there. Just go into creep mode, check when it's safe, then you can go. And bear in mind that cars from here can come around here and turn right and they will stop cars from your right potentially so do look both ways because you're looking for an opportunity to go from there or a lack of cars coming from here and when you've done that go out but for goodness sake do not attempt to go from back there i want you up here before you commit to going you must see both lanes now sometimes as we come along here they might say to you follow signs for guildford or the sat nav will say give you instructions but the examiner will say it's basically following signs for Guildford. So you come along here and then you see this road sign. As you can see there, Guildford is a head second exit. There you go, on the A331. So I'm thinking left-hand lane, no indicator, because that's a head, isn't it? That's default driving behaviour. So I'll be coming along here into this lane. Do not go wide. I don't want the right-hand lane, although you'll get away with it, but potentially anyway. So you come around here like this. Now we've got three lanes. That goes left only. This goes ahead and this also goes ahead. But if you came around here and got into this lane, you could be in a bit of poo just there. And the reason for that is this white line. You see, 
as somebody comes round a roundabout, the right hand side of their lane is the roundabout. And then this white line comes out. So actually this van, the right hand side of his lane is the roundabout there. And then it becomes this white line, which goes out to there. So the van itself should come round here and head off down there. Now, for people coming out of here, this white line is meaningless because we're not going past the originating point, which is there. So logically, this car should go to that lane. This car should go to that lane. So this car should go across this white line. What is very common is that somebody from here will go out, see this white line, panic and swerve it into there thinking it's for them. And it just isn't. Uh, I've had lots of people do that. If they come out of here, see that, swing left and they haven't done a blind spot check to see if anyone's in this lane, they have just failed their driving test. So do bear in mind, if you've got two lanes here and two lanes there, then logically this one should go there, this one should go there. And that line is only for people coming from around here. Now, we're going to go ahead too, that's what it said. So we should be coming up through here and going in the left-hand lane across to there. So you should come across here to there. So we come down here, checking as you're going. Remember, Look at the cars coming around this corner. If they're in this lane, then they will be coming on you. But if they're on the outside, then they're going straight on. So remember, uh, all about reading traffic. Go and read my document, you see? So anyone here will be coming around. Anyone in that lane will be going straight on and therefore blocking those guys. So work out where everyone's going and when safe, go across to there. Now we're in this lane, and we just follow this. Now, you know, just for a saving your own bacon point of view, you should keep an eye on these guys. Let me go around here. This is quite tight. And we go around this corner, and we follow the road ahead. Right now, notice we're all in the left-hand lane. So we've come through that roundabout, and we've done the whole thing in the left-hand lane. As we come up here, thank you, as we come up here, you start to see a road sign up there. Obviously, the raindrop has got in the way. There it is. So uh, a Guildford is ahead. Second exit. So that's left-hand lane, isn't it? And we come up here. And what I want you to be doing is looking at the red car that was just coming around. There he is hiding. So he's coming around. But also, this red car here might be a potential problem. And as we come up here, you're looking. Right, yes. So that Bentley, very nice, uh, is going to come across. Now, this car on the other side will go through and potentially block. So you've got to look for a blocking manoeuvre from him. Keep an eye on him and him and him. As we come through here, this red car stood in our ways. He's waiting for him. This is blocking our view. If you are a cunning fox and can go at exactly the same speed and make sure that you are fully blocked by this van, then you could go with the van. But if you're not convinced, wait, let the van go. Now, what is really common is for learners to cut across like that. And that's a lane change because you're going into this person's lane. You want to sort of head off towards the lamppost and then turn. All right. So you leave room here. So we go out like this, checking around as you're going. Look, there's a blocking maneuver. That's why everybody's come out. We go out here. So like the red car did, he's gone out there and then you want to follow that bit. You don't need to be here. Now. Up there is another road sign that tells you that Guildford is right at this roundabout. OK. But we've just come through here, following the red line, and we've gone through there, or the red car, sorry, come through to here. You have two lanes that go right. Therefore, you take the left of the two. Whenever there are lanes, two lanes that go to the same place, you take the left most. So we come through here. Okay, yes, you can panic and jump into the right lane if you want, but you've got to make sure nobody's in this lane. Uh, but bear in mind that this lane here goes ahead and right. You must therefore make sure that you have a right indicator on, because if you do not, you are telling everybody that you're heading off down there and we're not. We're heading off down there. Now we come out to this roundabout, checking it's all nice and safe, keeping an eye on him and seeing if anyone's coming around here and all that sort of stuff. And we go out now. Just here on the roundabout is a join. OK, so they sort of make one strip of tarmac here, another one there. So we've come down this hill in this lane, indicating right. So you should come out and get into that lane there and stay to the left of this join. Keep it on these cars because often they can't see your indicator, but you must have your indicator on and be mindful of the fact that this lot might think that you're heading off down there. So you come round the roundabout, staying on the outside, just like 
that now in that particular picture there are traffic cones so you'd have to swing back to the right so you check over your right shoulder make sure there's nobody in that lane then you can feed in now keep an eye on these guys so we're back here so we go around here and then you would just feed into that lane there be mindful of pedestrians that might cross the road so you come around here still on the outside so we're in the left hand lane throughout the whole thing and then you head off down the dual carriageway be mindful of people here now, so just for clarification purposes I just want to confirm that you will be coming up here in the left hand lane, go out into the left hand lane, following this through in the left hand lane, up here in the left hand lane, coming to here, going ahead to in the left hand lane, maintaining room for the vehicle on your right, through here into left hand lane. As you come along here, you indicate right, staying on the left hand lane around the roundabout in the left hand lane checking to make sure these guys aren't trying to crash into you and down the dual carriageway in the left hand lane heading on to the dual carriageway staying on the left throughout the whole thing so the whole roundabout sequence is triple roundabout you're coming along here and you just stay on the left throughout the whole thing just to be nice and clear all right left hand lane throughout the whole thing As we come down here this is now a 50 we've got national speed limit signs here but it is actually a 50 so we go down here and i want you to stay on the left hand lane throughout the whole thing all the way up there and as you get onto a dual carriageway your job is to match their speed so i want you to pick a hole that you want to get into so say behind this car or behind that van something like that so you want to come into this hole or this hole and i want you to accelerate so that by the time you get to the end of the slip road, you are at the same speed of these cars so that when the roads merge, you can just drop into the lane. OK, so what we're planning at this particular instance is to drop in behind the car. By the looks of it, so as we come up here, we're planning to get to there because we're allowing this one past and you just stay in this lane. Now, what's really common is that people, you know, not just students, but people generally will come along here and they move across to here and they try to get on very very early well that's a lane change there so unless you've done a blind spot check you can't do that so you have to stay on the left and besides staying on the left gives you a really long road so it makes it easier to merge your traffic so you want to come down here and then shoot off onto there now we're on the dual carriageway remember this is a 50 so you will get people zipping past you in fact look, there you go is a newer picture so we could still got a 50 but people often get uh, done for speeding along here. Now we're just going to fly down the dual carriageway. It's just a dual carriageway, so you just keep checking your mirrors, keep an eye on people. It's all a 50 zone underneath the bridges, past that exit. Keep an eye on people who might try to exit at the last minute. And then we just drive along here. Now around here somewhere, there's a road sign that says 60. So as we go there, oh, there it is, in fact. So we go through here into national speed limit and away we go. Now we're up in a 70, actually, not 60. What am I talking about? So if it goes national, then it's going 70. Remember, don't accelerate until you are in the 70 zone. So now we're just going down here at 70. Now we're going to get off at the first exit, which is Farmer North or North Camp, is it? Anyway, it's supposed to be for Farmer. There it is. And you want to be indicating somewhere between the three and the 200 yard markers, so somewhere around about there ish, possibly a little bit earlier. And you come along here indicating left, getting off. Now, the sat nav or the examiner will tell you that once you get off, you're going to be turning right at the roundabout. You should therefore be getting off here into that, but staying on the right hand side so that you can then populate that right hand lane. So I want you coming down here. And moving into this lane i don't want you on the left and then doing a lane change i want you aiming for that right hand lane because you are told that you are turning right at the next one if we were just told you were following farnborough you wouldn't know that it's right so you'd come down here well i mean you do now so you could get in the right hand lane anyway but if you didn't know the area at all you wouldn't be able to see this road sign until about here ish and so therefore as soon as you see that it's right four you should be immediately thinking right check on my right do a lane change don't wait until you're down there to do all of this. Get in there now. All right. Be proactive. And remember, once all four wheels are off that road and you've got all four wheels on the slip road, cancel that indicator. 
come down here just picking whichever lane you want and then when you're around this area start indicating for whatever you're going to do at the roundabout so we're coming down here in the right hand lane indicating right notice the change in speed limit to a 30 end of the no stopping zone and we come out here into this lane now as soon as these bushes get out of the way start working out what's going on and when you're happy that you can go out out you go now i want you to go out into here indicating right we're going to the fourth exit so that's the first one second one third one is where the red car is and fourth is over there and as we come around here i want you to keep an eye on people that are in the left lane because sometimes people go around the outside to try and overtake especially if you're in a learner car because people take the mickey so we go out of here and we follow it round. so you just count your exits off so that's one two the little yellow bollard is where three is and then four is over the bridge the problem is because this is all on quite a big hill as we come up here in a car you can't actually see that junction obviously we're in the google van which is high up so we can but you're lower down so you can't see that so it's the yellow bollard that tells you where the exit three is so you come around here and i want you to spiral into the left hand lane so we go around here checking on your left making sure no one is being an idiot keep an eye on him keep an eye on here spiral off into left okay now remember we just saw a 30 sign as we got off here lots of people speed along here don't get sucked into it i want you just to drive this is still a 30 zone you've got street lighting no speed limit signs therefore it's 30 you come around here you often get a speed camera van here so you've got the police parked on the bridge and then we're going downhill now this is very common for people to speed going downhill because gravity grabs hold of you and takes you down and then you've got the road sign there that says farnborough is left first exit so therefore we go down here now start looking i'd still be indicating left at this point we come down here and we're looking scanning looking for people coming around and there and remember when you scan you want to be looking sideways and forward and you basically just keep doing that right you will be able to see where you're going because your eyes are coming across and as you're doing it you know check your mirror as you come across so you're just scanning checking your mirror looking to the side mirror then behind and then so on and so forth all right and we just come around here checking we can see this lane goes around there like that so just <clears throat> the indicator is for their benefit so we come around here and we just follow this into left hand lane like that all right just keep to see check do a little sanity check make sure nobody's in this lane and away you go now we're just driving up here heading towards farnborough you've got your little pedestrian crossing there up here this is uh in one of the previous videos this little bit here is a no right turn but there's a 20 zone and what people can get confused here's the no right turn is they see that little 20 sign there and they think this is now a 20 zone but it's actually 20 for the side road notice it says ahead only anyway uh but there you got that is see that's the 20 zone not this this is still a 30 all right so just drive along here all the way up to st albans roundabout now we come around here notice this white line fires you into the right hand lane because that's a left turn only lane so you want to be coming around here and i want you to avoid going into this hatched area please it's very common for people to put their wheels in there i want you out there and i want you staying in that lane now as you get near here you want to be doing your scanning checking your mirror looking around checking left and right we come up to here start looking work out a hole that you want to take and then you're going to go out but let's have a look at st albans from above there is a lane here for turning left so cars there should go like that we're here we're going ahead so logically you would go from here to there around the outside and away if you were going to go right you'd go across to there and then round the corner now of course we are in the right hand lane but if we're going ahead that's the left hand lane so technically that is a lane change because you're going from the right to the left and what we don't know is if this car has even realized that that is a left turn only lane if he goes straight on and you move from here across to there you could potentially have a car crash so whenever you have a lane that's left or to the left of you um, that is a left turn lane you must make sure that as you go out you do a blind spot check on your left to make sure they have actually gone left because if he comes with you i would actually get into the right hand lane and slow down to let him go and then drop in behind him all right so it's out check so we're coming up to there 
Here it is. Here's your lefty turny. So you're checking. When you're happy, you go out. Check in. Check. Yes, it's fine. Now you can populate that bit. So it's a very quick out check. All right. And then you just follow this out to there, following the road ahead, heading back towards Queens. Queens roundabout. So we go along here. Remember, you've got your yellow box junction here. If these lights are flashing, you stop at this line. If they're not, you can go across. But make sure you don't stop in the yellow box junction at any point. And there's a keep clear there as well. All right. Here it is. So we then go across like this. Now we're going ahead at the roundabout second exit. So you've got Wavell School here. So we go through here. We're going ahead. So, of course, that is left hand lane by default until you know better. Good. We have an up arrow. Now, an up arrow, the first up arrow. So the leftmost up arrow will always go to exit number two because the left arrow will always go to exit number one. So we come through here. Right. That must be exit one. That must be one and two. See what I mean? So the left arrow will be exit one. That will be exit two. So we stay in this lane. Like this through here. Obviously, it's traffic light. So stop for the traffic light. And when safe, go across and you follow these dots. So just stay and count your exits off. And it just goes out to there. Like that. All right, straight across into there, and this one, and then we go round to the outside like that. Follow the road round, usual stuff, heading back to the test centre. Obviously, you've got your traffic light. When safe, you go across, back into a 40, because remember, this whole area, Queen's Roundabout, is a 30. So we were in a 30 as soon as we got off the dual carriage when we stayed in a 30 all the way. So only when you get down to here, you become 40. And then back on the road, back to the test centre. Whoosh. And we're back to the test centre. But don't relax. You're nearly at the end of your test. 30. All right. So it's 40. 30. And just there, 20. It must be the world's shortest 30 zone from there to there. Unbelievable. 20s. Massive speed bumps. I recommend second gear 15 mile an hour for these because these are horrible speed bumps. Uh, saves the car taking off because you could get marked down for taking off. Um, but just just relax, chill out, just go down here. And we just fly along here. Now we're back to that first roundabout we came to. Again, two lanes, so just stay on the outside, make sure it's all nice and safe and go off here. Now, sometimes they might get you to park on the right and do a right reverse. So you park up on the right, reverse two car lengths and rejoin traffic. It's nothing that you won't have practiced with me. So don't worry about it. Uh, just it's a really wide road. So um, it's lovely. Look, I'm looking for traffic again. So as you come up to here, you're just checking, make sure no one's coming at you. Go to the outside there. Lovely, jubbly. No one's trying to kill us off here. No one's walking across that over here. And there we go. So, yes, they have got double yellows now. But the examiners will still chuck you over there and reverse back and then get you to rejoin traffic. Um, if there's loads of room around you and there's no one going to hit you, then carry on. You know, do the manoeuvre. But you've got to demonstrate that you've looked for people. Uh, if it looks a bit dangerous, stop, let people go and then carry on again afterwards. And then you just follow the road ahead. Then you're back to the original junction and then just checking it's safe indicate right position on the right again i don't want people approaching on the left and then cutting across because you get marked down for positioning when you're turning right you position on the right simple then you come round here into here back down to the car park indicate right make sure it's all nice and safe into there and then it's the car park and have a look at the video about my car park that's it do that you should be laughing good luck